I started the fire. You Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I ask you to remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. A moment of silence for two women who we lost in the last two weeks. Angelina Falco, a Madison resident for 71 years, died on the 12th of April, leaving behind her sons, Philip and Joseph. Many will reckon, would remember her for many years of working alongside her husband and her children at Rose City Jewelers. We will uh, miss Angelina Falco. Also a moment of silence for Peggy Heller, um, wife of Martin Heller and one of our very generous residents who passed away, losing her battle to cancer. She will be lost. Um, her loss will be felt by all of us and her generos generosity felt by many for years to come. A moment of silence. Thank you. I have a, a motion for the executive minutes of March 25th, 2019. So moved. Second. Already discussed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Welcome all. We have uh, quite a crowd today for uh, many uh, things that are going on, recognitions and, um, and usual business also. One uh, item of business I want to uh, announce right now, the Ordinance 14 related to the sale of um, uh, puppies and kittens uh, is being pulled. We had two different versions that were being uh, put out there and the final version was not uh, uh, posted correctly, so uh, that will be uh, pushed to at the May 13th. So if you're here to comment, there, that action will not be taken tonight. A few other things to uh, get up, bring us all up to date. Um, as you know, at our last council meeting, we talked about it, it being local government week, and that was week of April 8th. I want to thank all the council members that came out for the 8 a.m. Uh, coffees Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And the, um, well, the, the turnout by residents was uh, light to say the least, so was the coffee at times. But um, I think it just reinforces the notion that local politics is very special. You don't need to come go to a scheduled coffee to talk to your local elected officials because you can find us on Main Street, you can, you can find us at Stop and Shop, you can find us anywhere and we're always ready to listen. But, uh, and we also had a great um, mock, uh, Council session here, and so it was a, a good first local government week. Uh, this uh, week ago on Saturday was the annual Chamber Easter egg hunt. It was a beautiful Saturday. If anyone was in downtown Madison, you would have seen the just families all over the place having a great time, and it was great to see so many of those families from outside of Madison. Uh, this past Thursday, I hosted a gathering of mayors to discuss the impact of the incredible growth along Park Avenue Corridor and with traffic and our quality of life. Uh, joining me and our council members were the mayors of Chatham Borough, Florham Park, Morris Township, Morristown, East Hanover, Hanover, and Hanover Township, in addition to representation from Harding and Chatham Townships. We also had our, uh, some of our state representatives, um, our state senator, Governor Dick Cody, Assemblywoman Myla J.C. from our district, from neighboring districts. We had uh, Assemblyman Anthony Bucco and Assemblywoman Nancy Munoz. We had representat representation from the county. And uh, we also had our Congresswoman, Mikey Sherrill, who is going to be fighting for uh, support from fe the federal government. DOT was well represented, and uh, they listened to all the challenges related to the Park Avenue and uh, Columbia Turnpike and especially exit 2A off of um, the um, Route 24 and the, um, the fact that 24 is well beyond its design capacity and they will take those back as they redesign uh, that section of 24 
and there was a commitment on all the elected officials, uh, including our state um, legislators, to the county, to the local, that we need to work regionally as we develop locally. So we're going to try to pull together our elected officials to uh, discuss the impact we make on each other. Um, the Kindness Garden, you saw the presentation at our last meeting by Girl Scout Stephanie Bradshaw, and she has hit the ground running. DPW poured a concrete base for the bench. Um, this is at Cole Park, and embedded in the concrete are the words, Kindness Rocks, written with colored stones. And yesterday, uh, she hosted a bench uh, painting um, celebration where you could put paint a uh, little heart on the bench that will be there, and I got to add two colored hearts to the bench. And I think that's it until I come down below here to do some presentations. <laughs> All right, Liz, do you mind stepping away from your uh, position there? We surprise her every year. It's not too far off from your birthday either. So this is our uh, recognition, and this is the 50th anniversary of Municipal Clerks Week, May 5th through the 11th. Whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk provides professional link between the citizens, local, local governing bodies, and the agencies of the government at other levels, and whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality, impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And municipal clerk serves the information center on the functions of local government and community. Every resident here in Madison knows that well if you come into the clerk's office. Municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of affairs of the Office of Municipal Clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, and workshops. And it's most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of Municipal Clerk, notably Elizabeth Osborne and Mary Vaccarello. So there, therefore I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the Garden Body, hereby recognize the week of May 5th through May 11th as the Municipal Clerk's Week and further extend our appreciation to Municipal Clerk Elizabeth Osborne to, and to all Municipal Clerks for the vital services they perform and the exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. So surprise, surprise. Is uh, William Espinoza here? Come on up. Any other, any other of our uh, postal workers here? Okay. <laughs> Someone recognized very well in town. Yeah. <laughs> William's always uh, yelling, "Hey, Mayor!" So welcome. <laughs> and it's it, we. It's an honor to recognize the great effort the post. Our, our male uh, men, male women throughout our uh, town do for stamping out hunger and the food drive, May 11th. So whereas every year on the second Saturday of May, letter carriers across the country collect non-perishable food as part of the nation's largest one-day food drive, distributing the donations to local food banks. And whereas the letter carriers stamp out hunger food drive, which is held in all 50 states, it's just one example of how letter carriers work to make a difference in the lives of those they serve. And whereas, since the pilot food, dri food drive was held in 1991, more than 1 1.67 billion pounds of food have been collected. And whereas all the food collected in our community 
stays in our community and we support the carriers' efforts to help those in need. And whereas we recognize all letter carriers for their hard work and their commitment to their communities, we also recognize the noteworthy milestone of 27 years that the National Association of Letter Carriers Food Drive celebrates in 2019. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the Mayor of Borough Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim Saturday, May 11th, as Letter Carrier Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive Day in the Borough of Madison, encourage all residents to support the food drive by placing non-perishable food items in or near your mailbox for the letter carriers to pick up as they deliver mail along their postal routes. Thank you for your leadership on this. Trisha Armstrong. Is Trisha Armstrong here? Please come on up. And anyone else representing Mad Madison into yellow? Or green, that was safe. <laughs> Whereas first celebrated in 2012, the United Nations adopted a resolution to bring about the awareness of International Day of Happiness, which is observed on March 20th each year to raise awareness on the importance of pursuit of happiness and well-being. And whereas depression affects over 18 million adults in any given year and is leading cause of disability for ages 15 to 44 and the primary reason someone dies of suicide resulting in over 41,000 deaths per year, making suicide the second leading cause of death for people between the ages of 10 and 34. Whereas the Borough of Madison, the Downtown Development Commission, the Madison Chamber of Commerce in collaboration with You, Me, We will hold a week-long Townwide celebration of optimism and resilience in honor of National Mental Health Month, which is observed in May by participating in Madison into Yellow. And whereas during the week of May 4th through 11th, the borough will explore collaborative art, educational speakers, mindful movement classes, and other community events at participating locations around town, including Short Stories Bookshop and Community Hub, and the Presbyterian Church of Madison as a way of celebrating the Oft unnoticed resources that strengthen emotional health and community connection. And whereas citizens can make a difference by brightening the lives and the community through civic engagement, activities and collaborations by visiting participating shops, studios, and organizations in the town from May 4th through 11th, we hereby appoint the following honorary ambassadors of optimism. Trisha Armstrong, Christina Bossini, Alan Coleman, Lisa Ellis, Scott Foster, Karen Giambra, Guillermo Gill, Father George Hunt, Donna Cass, Sarah Keffer, Cara Maximo, Pat Miller, Anita Pacheco, Gwen Riddick, Whitney Sobala, Lisa Sprague, and Melanie Tomaszewski. Melanie, how do you get hiding back there? <laughs> I should have gotten you up here. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim March 20th, 2019 is an International Day of Happiness in the Borough of Madison to increase public understanding of the importance of the pursuit of happiness and well-being, and May 4th, 11th, 2019, as Madison into yellow, and ask the residents to show their support by wearing yellow and participating in the many free public events that were developed in connection or in, in the intention of celebrating our optimism and resilience. Thank you, Tricia, for your work. Would you like to say a few words? <laughs> Maybe, do we have Lisa Ellis, come on up. Uh, and all the members of DDC, come and join us. Oh, you should get up, John. Uh, we'll see. There he is. You're here. Uh, you look great. You look great. <laughs> oh, it's, why we, it's why we love you. Oh, really, you should be up there. Yeah, John, John, over, come on. You're supposed to be a picture. Lisa, I'll take the picture. 
Owen Armstrong, please come up and bring your parents too. You couldn't be a great artist without them. Come on, don't you, you, you know what you know what it's all about. You're you're an old pro at this already. All right. As you may know that every year we have a contest with our elementary schools to uh, design the t-shirt that will be worn by nearly a thousand people on May Day, a week from this Saturday. And this is a first, because we have here our first two-time winner, right? Wow. Who has designed this beautiful shirt. <coughs> Would you like to say, tell us a little bit about your shirt? How you design? Okay. No? no. no. Someone, someone's got to follow me as mayor someday. You know. <laughs> Well, I know May Day is near Earth Day, so I just thought about the Earth and how we can make it a cleaner place. Excellent. That, that is beautiful. Well designed. Congratulations. Sean Dowling. Come on up, Sean. In a few moments, we're going to recognize the Madison High School boys basketball team for their accomplishments, and it's, it happens through the leadership of uh, a great athletic director. And we have a proclamation to um, recognize the fact that Um, to, to recognize that Sean was recognized by the state of New Jersey for being the outstanding uh, athletic director of the year. So Madison, the mayor and council hereby congratulate Madison High School Athletic Director Sean Dowling for his recognition as Athletic Director of the Year by the Directors of Athletics Association of New Jersey. The, this professional organization of New Jersey high school athletic administrators work closely with New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association to promote interscholastic athletic programs in the state. In testimony of our recognition of this well-deserved honor, they've put the official seal of the Borough of Madison on this, and congratulations, Sean, for job well done. I've been told I have to say something. <laughs> I have cherished, it's been a wonderful 14 years being your athletic director, being able to serve the students and the student athletes of Madison High School and the Madison community. It is a wonderful, wonderful place. Thank you for this honor. Can I have the uh, boys basketball team come on in? Crutches and marble is a rough combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As those that uh, attend council meetings or watch on um, TV or on the web all the time, we you know that we recognize great success and once again we have another t high school team that has shown great success oh, wow. there's a great quote in today's star ledger and i forgot who said it but i won't take credit for it and it's said that players win games but g championships are won by teams and this is what has been done here is a full team effort and uh read this quickly the mayor and council hereby congratulate the members of the madison high school boys basketball team for winning the NJAC Independence Division Championship. This accomplishment required extraordinary effort, outstanding teamwork, dedication, and perseverance. We commend the team members for their commitment in reaching this goal and recognize coaches Joe Real, Curtis Sally, and Patrick Lally for their 
leadership and training and coaching. The dedication and achievement of these outstanding athletes has brought great pride to the borough of Madison. So here we have official certificates. Andy Christos, not here. Troy Edwards, not here. I'm on a roll here. Uh -oh. Aiden Federally. All right, Aiden. Well done. Jack Hansen. Jack, well done. Congratulations. Nick Kitsopolis. Sorry. Nick. Hey, well done. Close. And I, again, I, as people know, I practice and I, then I can't, still can't do it. Ian Magnetti. Mag Magnani. Yep, thank you. Brendan Quinn. Alex Bent. Well done. AJ Gupta. Welcome to you. Very well. Mitchell Raven. Not here. Paul Sauer. Cy Bowen. Ooh. <laughs> Owen Elander. Owen Elander. Highlander. Brendan Mariano. Mariani. There's more than one Quinn. Patrick Quinn. All right, more than one. Sorry, sorry. Well done. Coaches, do you want to say a few words? Uh, thank you so much for this uh, this award. Um, I think the Madison community not only would be proud of these kids on the court, but off the court, they're all going to very, uh, all our seniors who are graduating are going to great schools, and um, they represented you know, this town with a lot of class, and uh, you should be very proud. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Chief Fluke, please come forward. Evan Webb, come forward. Family, this is uh, special in, in more than one one way. One, not only are we swearing in our newest career fireman, but to hold the Bible is my fifth and sixth grade principal from Green Village Road School, Dr. Bob Newhouse. So it's great to see you again. Raise your right hand, put your left hand on the Bible, and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Evan C. Webb. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of. All of the duties of. Probationary firefighter. Probationary firefighter. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. I further solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. Thank you. His brother is going to pin his badge on, a member of the Linden Fire Department. <laughs> Next. All right, Evan, you want to sign right there to make it official. Get a pen that works, sorry. <laughs> 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 
Copy to you, and uh, this is going to go with the clerk, though. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Evan. Congratulations, Evan. All right. Thank you. Got enough firemen, don't they? Thank you again, Colin. Yeah. It was really nice. I had all this like, electronic on it. Dump to put it away. Colin, I very much So he went down with me. And as the uh, fire department files out, I'm going to ask the Central Avenue School students to come on in. They had time. Yep. <laughs> There they go. I'm sure. It's not a hole. Do you think there's still people in yeah. the I don't know. That's a good question. So coming in here right now is the Central Avenue School Green Team. As many of you know, we held the Environmental Commission held the second annual uh, Green Vision Forum, and we had elementary schools, the junior school, the high school, junior university each present their ideas for creating a better world and not a better way to do this on Earth Day than to have the Central Avenue School Green Team to share their what they reported and presented at the Green Vision Forum. So I'll give you the wireless mic and then I'm going to go up to my seat. So where do we want to start with? The so thank you Mayor and Council for inviting us to uh, your meeting. We're very happy to uh, show our presentation. And um, happy Earth Day, everyone. Um, I'd like to introduce the green team. They're all fourth and fifth graders from Central Avenue School, and they've been working on a project. And as Mayor had mentioned, they had presented at the Green Forum. They've also presented three times today at lunches. So they've <laughs> given up a lot of lunches and recesses to help out with this project. And uh, we're excited to let you know about it. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves, and then they're going to get started. Hi, my name is Salome, and I'm in fourth grade. Hi, my name is Luke, and I'm in fourth grade, too. My name is Annika, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Thomas, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Braddock, and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Charlotte, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Michaela, and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Samantha, I'm in fourth grade. My name is Izzy, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Jay, and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Cammy, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Julia, and I'm in fifth grade. My name's Greg and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Dustin and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Joey, I'm in fifth grade. My name is Ella and I'm in fourth grade. Okay, and I'm Mrs. Mantone in case you don't know. <laughs> so I'm gonna have Salome start us off. Hi, we're the, school, we're the Central Avenue School Green Team. Plastic bottle caps may be small, but they can cause big problems. Each year we keep hoping we see less plastic pollution. Instead, we keep seeing more more plastic pollution on our beaches, lakes, stream, parks, and streets. We have noticed that when we walk around the town, we find bottle caps. Coastal cleanup day. Plastic bottle caps were the third most common item picked up at the California annual coastal cleanup day. Every day, 6.9 billion bottle caps are opened around the world. Plastic bottle caps are not recyclable everywhere. They are made up of denser plastic than plastic bottles. 
Because they are not recyclable, they should be taken off and thrown in the trash. Sometimes, putting bottles with caps on in the recycling bin can result in the entire bin being thrown into the trash. In our town of Madison, employees at the recycling center will take off the bottle caps from the bottles. The caps then get thrown in the trash. The problem is, is that when the caps are thrown out, they end up in a landfill and take hundreds of years to break down, or they end up in the ocean. When an animal swallows a bottle cap, it can't digest it, and then it dies. Since bottle caps can float, they are mistaken for food and eaten by marine life such as birds and fish. 90% of all seabirds have eaten plastic. Many of these birds die of starvation with plastics in their stomachs. Plastic bottle caps floating in the ocean eventually break down and are then eaten by fish. <coughs> fish eat the plastic bottle caps and their stomachs are, are then filled with the plastic and they slowly die. The CS Green Team would like to start collecting bottle caps. One plan is bring the collected bottle caps and organizations like Whole Foods um, participate in the Gimme 5 programs. The Gimme 5 program accepts items that are number 5 plastic and are not recycled by town organizations. This program sorts and recycles plastic bottle caps and other number 5 items. Another idea is to collect clean and sort plastic bottle caps and bring them to the green tree plastics to be made into park benches. This is something that would benefit the whole community. Green tree plastics take bottle caps and turn them into park benches. They accept number two, four, and five bottle caps to make the benches. Schools and communities have collected bottle caps to make these new benches and place them in different areas around their towns for everyone to enjoy. We have begun collecting at Central Avenue School. Some acceptable number five items include medicine ball caps, toothpaste caps, milk jug caps, flip top caps from ketchup, detergent caps, spout caps from mustard, spray paint caps, bottle caps from soda, water, and juice. The Madison Department of Public Works is donating a recycling bin for the school to collect caps. These are some of the bottle caps that you can put in our bin. We would like to get the community involved. Maybe we could possibly set up places for people to drop their caps. If, our, if, if we start collecting plastic bottle caps, our earth will be cleaner and the caps will be recycled efficiently. The CAS Green Team wants people to know that plastic bottle caps are not commonly recycled in towns and cities worldwide. We can make a difference by, reduce, rate, by reducing plastic pollution by collecting bottle caps and recycling them. Please help the Central Avenue School Green Team keep Madison green. Very well done, and I think you've uh, set the tone for what we can do on Earth Day and on every day, and we'll be collecting those bottle caps. And the fact that you've given up recesses and lunchtime to uh, keep presenting, you could be a future elected official, because that's what we have to do. <laughs> that's a nice job. <coughs> oh, good. I'll re repeat the announcement I made earlier. Ordinance 14, which was uh, going to be re introduced tonight, which was the um, ordinance the Borough of Madison amending and sup supplementing Chapter 59 of the Borough Code prohibiting the retail sale of dogs and cats in the borough has been pulled from the agenda. There was multiple versions of the uh, ordinance that went out, and we need to 
to clear that up. So that most likely will come back May 13th, but it will be listed on the agenda when it does come back. So if you were here to comment on that, um, you can come back at a later date, or you're always free to comment on the open comment period. And now let's get to re uh, reports from committees. Public safety, Council President Bailey. No report, Mayor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I figured you'd like that one. <laughs> Finance and Borough Clerk, Mrs. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. I'll take her time because this is long today. <laughs> no. The municipal budget is on the agenda for adoption to this evening. This process started behind the scenes way back in July when administration met with the department heads to discuss their operating and capital needs. The public portion of the budget process started in November, and since then, the Council has received numerous documents and had budget-related discussions at nine different public Council meetings. Um, I'm going to do a little show and tell. This is, um, this is, isn't this good? This is a good CFO. We put number one on here, so I know that. This is <laughs> the detailed Edmonds report. We see each one of the department heads gets this, and they take a look at it, and they go line by line and discuss what is going to be uh, part of their operating budget. So that's only one. Then we get this, which is a single sheet of the municipal um, budget and brief. That starts us off. Okay, here we go. Keep on going. <laughs> then we have what is called the budget alternate I think you did this, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, Ashley Ashley Bailey designed this. No, I didn't design it. I just I do it every year. <laughs> she asked the questions. I'm give her credit because she did, she did a good job. But um, this was kind of uh, really kind of cool because it's an alternative uh, format and it just kind of leads you uh, to different uh, sections of of the budget. This is the official state budget document. So this is one of the things that goes down to uh, the state. This is, believe it or not, this is the user-friendly document. I don't know that, that the CFO really feels that this is user-friendly, but it's <laughs> something that the state requires. So this has to be done. So as you see, we're, we're really heading into a process that's like extraordinary paper. Um, this particular <coughs> document, we're going to be seeing this in the next couple of weeks. And you might you might see this and 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 say, boy, this looks familiar. This is because it will be in all of your electric and your water bills. We'll be able to uh, take a look at uh, the 28. This is the 2018 uh, budget summary, but uh, the CFO does a great job on it, and it has lots of great information. So that'll be coming out um, in the coming weeks. Uh, that'll be in the tax bill, probably your electric bill, um, and uh, you'll be able to see exactly where all your money is going. Um, so we CFO created budgets in different formats, okay, and it takes a lot of work. And we do it to accommodate all of our residents. If you want a simplified budget, we have it. If you like details, we have that too. Overall, I think the budget process has been extremely transparent. I mean, when you think about all of these documents that are sitting here on Rosenet, and uh, you can look at them at your leisure, you could ask questions. Um, all, all these documents are up there. So if you're interested in learning more about it, you could take a look at it. And like I said, some of them are simplified. And then you have a budget sum uh, summary that is even more simplified. So every third year, the state reviews our budget to make sure it's properly stated and compliant with state law. Over the past four years, the administration and the auditors have been working with the state. And we're happy to report that we passed the review with flying colors. The only changes involve a small change to the cap calculations. Once the official state budget is adopted, the CFO and the clerk will forward the necessary information to the state, and the document will be posted on Rosenet. The 
finance department will then upload the budget to accounting software and the 2019 budget process will be complete. But remember, the 2020 budget process will start in just a few months in July. Uh, another good thing that we've, um, we've had, we had uh, lots of questions and conversations about the surplus. Uh, so the mayor um, set up a committee um, to talk about the 2020 budget process and the ad hoc committee is reviewing the municipal surplus and we met on, on, uh, already on Friday, April the 12th. Uh, the the uh, committee consists of myself, Councilman Pat Rowe, Councilman, Councilwoman Maureen Byrne, and, Pound, uh, and past Councilmember Ben Walkovitz. We discussed the goals and scope of the committee. We reviewed a bunch of numbers. <laughs> we evaluated, <laughs> evaluated <laughs> strategies to reach up with them. Happy spring. Let's start that set. <laughs> the committee will meet in the coming weeks and will review surplus policies from other towns, discuss 2020 budget estimates, and meet with the bond council and the auditor to get their input. So uh, we're moving along very nicely. Um, special thanks to the department heads, um, to the administration, uh, to Jim, who works very, very hard on this. Um, and, uh, you know, congratulations that we have a 0% increase this year again. So um, I think it's something to be very proud of. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Utilities, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. From the Electric Department, on Tuesday, the April 11th, the Electric Department installed a 2,000-foot underground fiber cable at Rose Hall. Uh, this was done to save the borough a significant amount of money over what an outside vendor had quoted for the job. And on April 17th, the department had confined space entry training conducted by an outside contractor. Uh, from the water department, the contractor installing the new eight-inch water main on Greenwood Avenue has now completed that project. They will be making a connection between uh, Florham Park and Madison's water systems at the intersection of Greenwood and Seven Oak Circle. These types of connections are only for emergency use when one water system needs to supply the other for a short period. Uh, next, the new section of 8-inch water main was installed by a private contractor that's building new, four new homes at the end of Luanica Terrace. This new main connects Rose Court to Luanica Terrace and converts two dead-end mains into a continuous loop, which should increase the water flow and fire protection for that area. And finally, uh, the A and B uh, well treatment plants uh, variable frequency drives have been installed and up and running. These drivers operate the booster pumps more efficiently and remove any potential for water hammer, which could damage our water system. Uh, some final cosmetic work needs to be completed, but the main work has been done. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Ms. Byrne. Ah, thank you, Mayor. So uh, the Department of Public Works has been busy servicing and repairing all of the uh, borough's um, vehicles. Uh, they've been <clears throat> doing a lot of work at the parks uh, maintaining them, getting the athletic fields ready for play this spring, um, collecting recyclables and yard waste. Um, the roads department, uh, after every winter, we have potholes, and so they're out there uh, filling them, up, uh, filling the potholes, and uh, doing various things to keep the keep the town looking good. Um, from the engineering department. Uh, Greenwood Avenue North Reconstruction has had su successful bids on Thursday the 28th, uh, so that's going forward. Um, and then uh, it looks like um, Community Place will be rebid on the 30th of May. And then finally, um, the Well AB treatment plant was completely su was completed successfully on April 10th. Uh, there are a couple more um, improvements that have to be made, but for the most part, it is up and operational. And then finally, today is Earth Day, and I am old enough to remember and having participated in um, the original Earth Day. Um, not, not long after that, um, the Muppet movie came out, and Kermit the Frog saying that immortalized song, it's just not easy being green. Well, I'm here to tell you it's really not that hard. Um, you have 
your recyclable bag, which you carry with you at all times, not just when you go to the food store, because this bag, you can put anything we sell in Madison in this bag. When you go out to dinner and you have this awesome meal that you cannot finish, you bring your own takeout and you do that. This is, this is, this is a die-hard one. Um, these are reusable vegetable bags. You keep them with your reusable bag and no, you can eliminate all the plastic that you needed in Stop and Chop. 6.9 million, billion caps. If you have a reusable um, bottle for water or whatever beverage you feel like putting in there, you've, <laughs> yeah, um, you, have, uh, you have done away with the need for those bottle tops. And this is an environmental cookie, which was, um, yes, so this is, a, um, this is a meringue, and the way you make meringue is, you, while you are fixing everything together, you turn the oven on to 350, and then you put your cookies into the oven, and you turn it off. And the next morning, you have a meringue cookie. And finally, uh, when we talked about the plastic, when we were talking about the plastic cups, um, bottles, I have eight pieces of lawn furniture that I got from a um, <clears throat> from J and M in my backyard, and they are all made out of um, plastic bottle caps. So, you know, this may seem extreme, but really, just taking one or two steps every day can really, really make a difference. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And um, community affairs, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and the seniors for the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. The next meeting is planned to be held at Rexford Tucker on May 8th from 3 o'clock to 4.30. Everybody's invited to come. A member of uh, SCAC proposed, after research, the need for a check-in phone system to supplement efforts to date. A report and a plan of action will be forthcoming at the next meeting. The SCAC chair, the Senior Center Director, and the borough's communication and technology coordinator are putting together a communication plan to make people more aware of Senior Citizen Advisory Committee and the opportunities to join or work on SCAC projects. At the Senior Center, <clears throat> residents who may need a ride around Madison can call the Civic Center at 973-593-3095 to use the free van service. Staff and volunteers from the Senior Center worked with residents today at Chateau Thierry to paint flowers for Into Yellow. The annual volunteer appreciation lunch was held at the Civic Center on April 17th. It was very well attended and very nicely done. <clears throat> Tritown 55 Plus Coalition, a cooperative joint learning program among Tritown 55 Plus Coalition, the adult school, and the mayor's wellness programs from Madison and Chatham will be held on May 15th and May 22nd from 1 to 2.30 p.m. at the Madison Community Arts Center. The program is a conversation of your life, C-O-Y-L, Coyle, and everyone dies, and is meant for all ages as a way for people to actively plan their lifelong wishes. From the Director of Development and Downtown Development Commission, May Day is scheduled for May 4th. Volunteers are still needed. Please sign up by emailing ddc at rosenet.org. The DDC is planning a new event to be called the Rose City Summerfest. It is on the calendar for June 15th from 12 o'clock to 6 p.m. This family-friendly event will include all-day music, great local food, amusements, and a beer garden. Planning is underway for the Madison Farmer's Market. Contracts have been sent to last year's vendors, and new vendors are being contacted to fill openings. The market will return to Central Avenue between Cook and Main Street and will run from Thursday, May 23rd through October 24th. The hours will remain from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 7 and will again feature weekly musical performances. The Chamber of Commerce, the monthly networking breakfast will be held on Tuesday, May 14th at 7.45 a.m. 
uh, they're going to have Frank Curran, the owner of Greenhouse Solar, come and speak. Ladies' night, Thursday, May 9th, from 5.30 to 8.30. Registration will be held at La La, La Hair and Beauty Room. Annual awards dinner for the Chamber of Commerce will be held on Tuesday, June 4th at the Brook Lake Country Club from 6 p.m. Tickets are $65 a person. Award winners will include the best complete renovation, the most creative window, appreciation award, outstanding nonprofit of the year award, a Madison Volunteer of the Year award, community service award, and distinguished service award. Fire extinguishers inspection program is scheduled for Tuesday, June 11th from 12 p.m. to 4 on the corner of Main and Central. Uh, no reports from the museum or MACA or the Recreation Advisory Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And health. Uh, first, calling. from the community pool, please come and join us on May 19th between 11.30 and 1.30 for the Madison Community Pool's open house. Enjoy samples from the pool's new food vendor, Divine Catering of Madison. Register for memberships, face painting, and glitter tattoos will be available for children. And get acquainted with the facility and amenities. Don't forget, you can go to madisonpool.org and register for one of the various memberships. From the health department, the public health nursing supervisor has posted helpful information on RoseNet regarding the current measles outbreak. The regular meeting of the Board of Health scheduled for May 21st has been rescheduled to Wednesday, May 15th at 7.30. The Board has passed a resolution encouraging the Mayor and Council to adopt the ordinance that amends Chapter 59 of the Borough Code. The Board of Health is also reaching out to the local Board of Education for input on looking at current policy regarding smoking and vaping in and around schools. MASA is promoting National Prescription Drug Take Back Day on April 27th. Look to Rosenet and Facebook for more information, including acceptable medications and where drop-off locations are. MASA is provi providing Madison tuxedo shops with Save-A-Life cards that remind students to stay sober during prom season. And finally, Madison Mental Health First Aid Training will be May 3rd at the Kirby Center, training on how to help someone experiencing mental health crisis and identifying the appropriate signs. Information can be um, gotten again on Rosenet, Facebook, and through the Health Department. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are on to the budget hearing. I will uh, be opening the meeting to the public for their opportunity to ask questions and to make comments on the proposed municipal budget. If you have questions, we'll capture the questions and our uh, CFO and or our auditor, Valerie Dol Dolan, will be answering those questions as we get through the uh, hearing. Anyone wishing to comment or ask questions on the budget, please step forward. Yes, Kathy, come on up. And you know the routine, state your name, your address, and write the same on the clipboard and uh, try to keep, keep your comments to three minutes, but I'll let you go to four if you slip past the three. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to make just a couple of uh, quick comments, actually just highlighting a few things on the one-page budget. I don't know how much you're going to talk about it today, but there are a few things that I wanted to point out. Uh, I, I don't, did you, your usual name and address? I don't think we can get I, Oh, sorry. I really That's all right. I didn't say it. Yeah. Kathy Daly, 20 West End Avenue. Thank you, Kathy. So uh, the first thing I wanted to point out was the total utility surplus from capital debt, which is um, total utility surplus for capital slash debt, B14. And if I misspeak, I'm sure you can correct me uh, later. Um, but that's $6,055,525. And our total appropriation is $32,213,859. $32,213,859. So as a percentage, of our total appropriations, it looks like that's almost 20%, 19, 18, somewhere in there. So it's still pretty high. I know it went down a little bit year over year, but it seems like it's still very high as we've all discussed in the past. Um, and then the, the other item I wanted to recall was uh, about a month ago, um, the CFO and Councilman Rowe worked on um, adding up all the surpluses that exist in the borough, in various pockets within the borough. 
and it was uh, close to our total uh, annual collection of property taxes. It was almost, uh, I think it was like 98% of our annual tax revenue collection per a year. Um, and again, if I misspeak on that, um, please correct me, but it seems like we're sitting on a whole year's worth of tax collection. I, I, I mean, I know the term sitting on, but we have it stashed away, and it seems like uh, quite a bit. So I'm glad that, that as uh, Councilman Vitale mentioned, you're, address, you're uh, starting to discuss it, um, and I'm, I look forward to hearing more status about this. So thank you for doing it, and I look forward to hearing more about this. Thank you. Anyone else wish to comment or ask questions, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. May I have a motion for resolution 132, the resolution of Borough of Madison, finally adopting the 2019 budget and tax resolution. Mayor, I uh, move resolution 132-2019. Second. Council discussion or CFO, you want to come on up and, uh, and invite Val up if you need to add. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the discussion of surplus is something that we talk about every year based on the strategic planning guidelines. It's something that we're monitoring. Um, as we reported earlier, uh, we are over the high end, and that's the purpose of the committee is to sit there and discuss next steps. Uh, we talked about ways to, I'll say, throttle back on the generation of surplus. This year happened to be a particularly unique year. I think next year we're going to see changes heading in the other direction. Um, the, there's going to be additional expenses that we're going to see in garbage and in joint meeting sur sewage processing costs that are going to go up significantly. And in terms of surplus generation, we had a significant amount of additional dollars come in because of the residents looking to get additional um, deductions on their property taxes by prepaying their property taxes in 2007, end of 2017, which meant we had higher balances that earned interest and then interest rates went up. The combination of the higher balances and the interest rates went up generated um, an increase in interest rates. We have now in this year's budget significantly increased what we're anticipating in those revenues. By doing that, that's going to automatically reduce the amount of surplus generated there. Also, the surplus generated from the pilot payment from the GVR property. At the time we did the budget, we did not know exactly when that pilot payment was going to start because uh, of construction and certificate of occupancy uh, and how that all works. Um, the funds came in and that is reflected in surplus, but as council knows, $140,000 of that has now been reduced because that was paid to the Board of Education in their portion. So the surplus balances that we even discussed about back in March are, uh, are, are reduced just by that amount. So I think that there is a policy and a process in place. The last thing I would say is it's, it's kind of like uh, landing uh, a rocket on a floating uh, ship in the ocean and you only get to touch the controls once a year. We're only really able to, man to make changes to what's going to happen with the surplus once a year during the budget process. So this year, the 0% tax increase and the increase in the amount of the use of municipal surplus, which is B1 on the one-page budget summary, and the increase in the amount of revenue anticipated, which is B2 on the budget summary, all those things are going to have a dampening effect on the amount of surplus. So I would just point all of, all of those out. Um, and in regard to making statements that we're sitting on or stashing away uh, funds, I don't think that's, that is, I, I would represent that differently, and I would say that we're being good stewards, that we're preparing for the replacement of a substation, that we are ready to start, uh, that we have funds set aside, and hopefully um, soon we're going to start replacing water meters and uh, doing that with the automated meters, and that we have significant exposure on tax appeals uh, for some properties that are 
for, for six years. Since 2013, there are certain properties that have appealed their property taxes. So we know, and they're not small properties, it's not a, a house, it's a major commercial piece of property in town. So we know that we're going to actually have to physically pay money out. So we need to have reserves to be able to do that. So, um, and, uh, so I'll, I'll do that, and then I just want to say one thing. Council received a user-friendly budget, a state-mandated document. <laughs> um, I think Carmela spoke uh, or, well that or it's, paper. Uh, um, user-friendly um, for the recipient, but it's difficult for the CFO. Uh, but that's okay. So um, one, one minor uh, amendment we want to do on here is that on page, I think it's U, U11, um, we're just going to add that we're a recipient of a shared service from Bloomfield for the health department. Um, this document uh, will be submitted to the state, but as I have reported to you, there's a system that in June, July, August, we'll be taking the old budget document that we have, and it's finally going to be replaced by an electronic system. That system will generate <clears throat> a new user-friendly budget that will be the data that's stored year-to-year -year by the state. That's their goal, is to have all of this data stored on a year-to-year -year basis in a more, um, uh, in, in a way that towns can compare each other more clearly. And I think that's the real benefit of what the state is going to be doing. And once that happens, uh, we won't, this document, at, which is believing on an Excel spreadsheet, will no longer exist. It will just be created by that system. And then we'll be able to compare ourselves, our cost of police or our cost of health insurance um, or st other statutory expenses to other towns. So uh, that's the purpose of the user-friendly budget. It's in front of you this evening. And uh, if there are any questions, I can entertain them now. Any questions for Jim? Pat? Yeah, just one question. You mentioned, and this is the first time I heard it, that the Board of Ed pilot money, and I'm assuming also the county pilot money, Correct. was included in our end of year surplus? Yep. Can we get that back out? Because I didn't think that we ever captured money that technically didn't belong to us. Like, I never thought we carried the Board of Ed's um, portion of the tax collections on our books. I always assumed it shows up in the audit, but it didn't show well, up in the, our finance. Yeah, the, ta um, Pat, the tax collection wouldn't show up. Well, pilot, the pilot to me is the pilot, same thing. Yeah, okay. the pilot does. So we'll, we'll make sure that that's understood and, and corrected. And it will be now in the future because, as you know, we're going to pay them we, more frequently. We're going to pay them on a quarterly basis. So that will just automatically clear itself up um, going forward. Okay. Um, you know, in terms of the surplus, it was interesting this morning I was looking at the, um, um, I get the uh, daily updates from all the various newspapers in the area, and I noticed that one of our colleagues in our neighboring township decided to vote against his budget because he was not happy with the amount of surplus they were carrying. Um, I will be voting for the budget um, this year, but if I'm still sitting here next year, and uh, we're still moving in a direction that I don't consider favorable to taxpayers, uh, you, you will not get my vote next year. Um, I don't consider this like a, I understand all the things you ran through for this year, but this, this is something that's been building up over five, six, seven years. So it's not a one year issue. And each year we have a different sort of reason why, but every year, you know, the money that we have from our taxpayers increases by anywhere from 750 to over a million dollars. And I think at this point, we really need to draw a line in the sand. So I'm looking forward to the discussions we'll have over the next several months um, in our committee and being able to come back to council and hopefully jointly recommend uh, something for, the, for us going forward, or at least lay out the information and have a full discussion here, depending on how the committee wants to go forward. So thank you. Can you, Oscar? I just want to thank you. I think it's a good budget. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing to have a surplus. I think it's a good thing that we have a committee to discuss it, to discuss what the, the acceptable limits are on it. But um, as you said, next year is going to be a very different year, and we may have expenses that require us to take that surplus and, and use it. So thank you, Jim. Maureen? Yeah, I'd like to reiterate what Austria said. Thank you very much. We've had a number of years under our belt now with you crafting the budget, and it's very clear and um, accessible. And unlike uh, a number of previous councils, um, we do have surplus. We go back far enough. We, <clears throat> we see that surplus wasn't being generated, and that meant capital improvements to the town weren't being done. So not only have we um, created surplus, but our roads are better now. So thank you. Comments? And um, 
also part of the whole discussion around surplus, just a reminder that we, you know, the dividend for the uh, utility is increased not only by the amount, but uh, the fact that it's going to be spread over the eight months instead of 12, and we'll have a conversation in the fall coming out of the committee work, so maybe uh, an additional dividend. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Al Dolan is here. If there's any questions for our auditor, she's already provided her uh, opinion of the budget uh, when it was introduced. If we're good, then we'll uh, go to roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Hearn? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Yes. All right. Any communications or petitions? Uh, yes, Mayor. Council received an email from Dr. Russell Earl of Long Valley uh, opposing a proposed pet shop uh, ordinance, and another email on uh, April 18th from Nora Parker of St. Hubert's thanking the Mayor and Council for allowing comments during the last council meeting regarding the proposed board. All right, and we're on to our first invitation for discussion. This one is limited to the uh, loan agenda discussion or any of the resolutions. The agenda discussion is the Madison Recycling Center, the resolutions, which I'll read through quickly so you also have it for the uh, prior to our uh, consent agenda. Uh, resolution 133, awarding contract to Cefali and Son for um, Greenwood Avenue North reconstruction. This is the amount of $446,000, and this is funded through Ordinance 1, 2019. Ordinance 1, 134, which is setting salaries for full-time non-union personnel, and that, those are listed on the posted uh, resolution. The uh, resolution 135, accepting resignation of um, Michael Quinn, effective October 26. He's um, our con a construction subcode official. Uh, resolution 136, awarding professional services contract to Mott McDonald for the uh, biannual reporting, Bailey Ellard and uh, the MRC um, fields, not to exceed 28,000, and this is uh, funded through open space. Uh, resolution 137, authorizing the um, Police Unity Bike Tour to raise awareness for fallen law enforcement heroes, and this is going to occur through Madison on Wednesday, May 9th. Resolution, res, resolution 138, uh, approving bingo license application submitted by the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Resolution 139, approving temporary signs for American Association University women for their annual book fair, which was from June, 9, June 3rd to the 9th and will allow 10 signs going up starting on May 15th. Resolution 140, appointing um, summer interns, and those uh, all at $12 an hour. The uh, positions and names are on the posted resolution. Resolution 141, granting Madison Education Foundation permission to tie ribbons on Waverly Place from April 23rd through May 5th to promote their 5K run, which will occur um, May 5th. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I forgot to use a highlighter on that one. Uh, resolution 142, authorizing the annual Farmer's Market on Central Avenue between Main Street and Cook Avenue starting Thursday, May 23rd, and going through October 24th. So those are... And wait, one more. But wait, 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 there's more. Resolution 143, approving raffle license application for P, uh, the Tory J. Sabatini PTO. And resolution 144, appointing Brett Smith to the position of probationary police officer. So those are the um, resolutions. You can make comment on any of those or the um, one discussion item. Please step up to the uh, lectern, state your name, your address, and the resolution you're uh, asking about or commenting on. Kathy Daly, West End Avenue. I just want to express particular support for Resolution 138, which is approving the bingo license application to the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps Incorporated. Um, it's a great event. Uh, I, I know that it's an important fundraiser for the Ambulance Corps. And, uh, Every time I go, I not only hope, not only do I hope that they raise a lot of money, but I also hope that they inspire people who are attending just for fun to consider volunteering for the ambulance. So I have uh, one express my particular support for that resolution. Thank you very much. 
Anyone else wishing to comment on any of the resolutions or the one agenda item? Seeing none, we close this part of the meeting and we go on to the agenda discussion item, the Recycling Center. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, Council Members, Frank Rousseau, System Borough Engineer. So the Recycling Center, if anyone has been to the Public Works Yard, it's in the exact center of the whole Public Works Yard, right below the two eyes. <clears throat> also, if you've been to the DPW Yard, you know that Half of the plastics end up somewhere other than in the bins that say, please throw empty bags away. <clears throat> so our goal is to move the recycling center out of the middle, put it over off of Station Road in that area where the uh, boats and the trailers were stored. We're going to, the design is to have direct drop off into uh, containers rather than on the ground right now. Residents drive through the public works yard, find the please empty bag sign, throw all their stuff on the ground. <clears throat> when the bin gets kind of full, public works has to pick everything up in, in machinery, dump it in the, in the roll off. We want to skip that step, keep everybody put their stuff right into their dumpsters, <coughs> cleaner, faster, and safer. We're going to use pretty much where the existing gate is off of Station Road that we haven't used in a long time. It's a good place to have residents come in. Uh, we're still working out the details on one entrance or a one-way through. There's a utility pole and some guy wires. We're close to, to coming to completion on the design. Um, even though the sign says, please throw your bags away, most of the bags don't always make it. So we have this cross-contamination of solid waste into the recyclables, the waste stream. <coughs> Hopefully, with the new center and uh, part-time staff, we can uh, stop that, help people do it right. Well, as I said, right now it's unrestricted. Everyone, anyone can drive into Public Works Yard, <clears throat> find the middle, throw their stuff on the ground. You're gonna have nice signage, <clears throat> some screening. One way in, one way out. Here's everything. One stop shop. And uh, that's it. Um, I understand that there are some clean community grants. We're going to be exploring to see what, what we can use towards the, the payment of, of the, um, the recycling center. Uh, I'm hoping to get started, you know, if uh, sometime in October. There's a lot of moving parts where the, the recycling center is right behind where the Madison Electric Storage Building is going to start soon. So I want to, we have to finish some things before we start other things. Does anyone have any questions? Yep. Thank you. I think it's a, a move in the right direction. It's certainly not the uh, best layout or the safest layout right now. So it would be a great improvement. Maureen? And uh, then Ostry? And then Deb? No, I think this is a wonderful idea. Um, I, it, it just, you know, I think it will actually increase recycling because uh, it will be clearer. My, I have a little question. I understand. Maureen, if you can um, talk into the microphone. So. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I have a small question. I, under, I understand that um, the receptacles will be buried into the ground so that you're not, you know, testing your jump shot. How do you get the how do you get the stuff out? I mean, how do you get 
You obviously, you must be able to get under the bin and put it on the loader. So our recycling contractor will be able to back in through the public works yard, uh -huh. back up to the back of the roll-offs, pull it up and drive okay. away, and then drop a new one in. Okay. Thank you. Austria and then Deb. So have you looked into the costs, and that's number one, timeline? You're saying you're going to start in October. How, when would it finish? Three, are we going to need to hire someone to to monitor it, to make sure we, we get the different items in the right bins? Um, what, what, what's the procedure here? All right, so costs are fluid right now, but mm -hmm. I think we're 150,000 soup to nuts, um, which includes, you know, gates, actuators, um, cameras, Timing was October-ish to get a bid package together, go out to bid, award a contract, and have everything built. And what was the third? How long to uh, the how long the construction will take, and when? So when would it, if we October is going out to bid? When is it up and running? Uh, I think it would be up and running at the end of the year. Or a year? It's going to take a year to do all no, this? No, the, the end of the year. The end year. of the year. Okay, yeah. phew. <laughs> so that's a really long project. <laughs> Longer than taking green, green, Greenwood. Okay, so then what happens with um, monitoring it? Uh, do you have people who will be hired? Or, I mean, how, how does that work? Do, uh, more CFO access? Is, it has advised me that there is budget in the DPW for a part-timer. So we had opened it up to more than just the couple of days it's open now? Uh, the plan was to open it up at least one day on the weekend. Okay. Thanks. Deb and then uh, Carmelo. Well, and I think that leads to part of my question that, you know, it's going to be, you're going to restrict the access to, with the gates. But, yes. And, but I guess part of it is, is you've got, right now anybody can go in. How are you going to know it's only Madison yeah. residents going in? Like, how do I get, as a, as a Madison resident, how do I get through the gate versus, you know, somebody living in Chatham that is going to get through that gate? That's an excellent question. <laughs> um, I don't have an excellent answer right now. Um, <laughs> but but st staffing asking for... <coughs> driver's license? Driver's license or proof of uh, residency could be a uh, fairly simple one. I was going to say the quality of the recycling would show that Madison, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know other municipalities uh, have a little sticker that they put on the mirror, the rear view mirror on the cars. That could be something we could explore as well. So that would go, I guess, back to Austria's question that we'd have to have somebody there whenever it's open to look at that sticker or have somebody there as well. Maybe they could do, you know, I don't know, just food for thought. Thank you. That's that's the goal. Carmel? Yeah, I, Deb really was going, in, oh my God, we were going in the same, in, in the same way. Um, I, I, I have controlled access from the existing gate circled here because I didn't quite understand what you mean by controlled access. You know, um, is it a gate that's going to open up or... I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't understand it, so we, that would be a good thing for us to get answered because um, you know, she was... Um, I'm, I'm assuming right, right now, though, there might be limited... In theory, we have limited recycling hours, but every, time, every hour they, um, we're open there, and the gate is not... I don't think we actually have a gate right now. No. So, so it's basically open to the world. This would be... Not an automatic gate per se, but it would only be open when the recycling center is open. Is that one? So and if I can make a suggestion to you, because um, Deb brought up another good point uh, regarding how do we know that it's Madison residents. If you go down to the city of Summit, they have, you know, they have a pretty good controlled um, dumping area. So um, it, might be, it might be a good thought to uh, talk to the people down there. It's worked very well. And um, it might be of some help to you. 
Thank you. Pat? Um, I'm just looking at a satellite view. So are we taking out all the trees that are going to be in that circulation, or are the trees going to sit in the middle and the road is going to run around the outside of it? Uh, no, we're going to take all the trees out. <clears throat> we are, okay. Um, second thing is, although it could be a problem, I'm not sure. We should actually probably run this for a while and see if we're really getting a ton of other people's recycling stuff before we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to on a problem that we might not even have. I'm not sure that a lot of people are going to be driving here just to drop their stuff off, but I don't know. This, this, I don't think that's the biggest problem. Yeah, no, so. no, no. no. The biggest problem. I think getting people in and out of it. Yeah, well, that's what I'm looking is, at. Is the problem, actually. So there'll be screening between uh, this property and the neighborhood? Yes, right now there's a six or eight foot high fence with some evergreens that are all now taller than the fence. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to supplement that with lower evergreens, a little denser along the fence line. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mayor, can I just summarize? I think we lost some of this. I mean, the, the basic thrust tonight was that the, the new location was going to be much safer and residents don't have to drive through the yard to find it. There's going to be less contamination because it's not going to be blowing around out of an open container to a closed container. There's going to be less DPW labor because right now when the materials get there, we have to double handle it. They put it in the open container. We've got to get a loader and then load it and move it again. So we're double handling the material. This way you just come. It's easier for the residents to just drop it in and then the loader comes and lifts it away. The project's going to be 100% funded. We already have clean community grants and we have recycling grants we get on an annual basis. We've been stockpiling them. I mean, that could be viewed as part of the surplus to pay for that. So those grants will pay 100% of the cost of this. We have money in this year's operating budget for DPW to cover the staffing of this facility. Right now we're only open three hours on Monday, three hours on Friday, which is really not convenient for our residents. This will allow us to have a gated access, security camera, and a staff person on a half day on Saturday to make it easier for the residents to get there. And then the important thing is the more we recycle, the less we pay in tipping fees in terms of the garbage. So this thing pays multiple ways for the residents. Yeah. And you're also freeing up a piece of prime real estate in the middle of the yard. Yeah, I think that, that's important. And the other is uh, indirect savings is the potential liability we have by p residents going well too far into this uh, our yep. property. Can I, can I just ask one more question? Uh, there was a master plan that was being developed for that DPW. <laughs> is, is this part of it? I don't think this was contemplated during that master plan, but this would definitely fit into what it, we would have wanted. It, it did, and it's not contrary to anything in that master plan. So yeah. this, this is a, so in a way, you looked at the, you, you were aware of the master plan and this was designed around it anyway. It was the most convenient place to put it, but nothing else was going on in this area. No. I think just related, and maybe I'm living in my own little world, I didn't even, I've been in town since 2004, I didn't even know there was an option on Mondays and Fridays that I didn't have to wait for my recycling to drop stuff off. So even before this happens, a little PR campaign, letting people know, because there are certainly weeks where it would be helpful to have yep. that opportunity, even with the limited hours, and I'm just hearing about, you know, yep. through this process. <laughs> Sounds good. Any other questions for Frank? So we'll be looking forward to uh, more when there's a formal proposal for appropriation of funds. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. There are no ordinances for hearing. And so now we move on to our invitation for discussion number two. This is when you may, you, you may comment on any topic. Again, same rules apply. Uh, please try to keep your comments to three minutes, but I will stop you hard at four minutes. And if you have anything to comment on, please step forward, say your name and address, write the same on the clipboard. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. No, just just hand the clerk and we'll distribute at another. At, oh. I'm not the clerk. No. She's the clerk. The, the one that got the recognition today. <laughs> Good evening. 
My name is Jean Clayton. I'm from Marlton, and I'm representing New Jersey residents against puppy mills. I'm speaking tonight about this because I was unable to attend the first meeting, and I will not make the other meetings. I've been living in Massachusetts caring for a terminally ill relative, so I hope this is not a problem for me speaking tonight. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on two of the remarks from the first meeting. I wasn't here, but I did see the tape that you put up. Um, Ms. Knowles from Furrylicious said that she has never been uh, received a violation from the Consumer Affairs, so her puppy store is fine. The truth is, Consumer Affairs never knew she was a <clears throat> pet store. They thought she was a groomer, so they were not in there checking her. They never did, and that's why she never got a violation. The other thing was uh, something Mr. Morton said uh, from Shaka Paul, that he gets inspected regularly, and there are very tough conditions. Uh, Mr. Morton has two stores. One in Greenbrook hasn't been inspected since 2015. His other store in Union has been inspected due to a complaint. Like most other pet stores, they haven't had any kind of inspection since 2015. If the pet stores were everything they said they are, we wouldn't be here tonight. We wouldn't be asking for this ordinance. But they are not. They say they buy from responsible breeders. They visit them. They're perfect. That is not the truth. That's what those photos I, I wanted to give you <clears throat> shows. Uh, Miss Knowles going to a breeder of hers, Phil Hoover, with pristine cages, beautiful flowers, four little puppies. Mr. Hoover is a very well-known man. He's a mega breeder. <laughs> uh, what? what? Yeah, his name is this Hoover. Is Hoover. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, but you're not from Missouri, right? <laughs> <You don't> have... <clears throat> um, this is unbelievable. This is not a puppy mill. This man normally has 300 breeding dogs and 200 puppies at any given time, and this is on inspections from the USDA department where I'm getting these numbers. So I want to know why these pictures, where did these come from? What are they? And I hope you will ask Ms. Knowles at the next meeting, <clears throat> because I won't be able to be here. The other two pages I gave you, and I hope you'll look at them, are from a, a breeder in Oklahoma and one in Missouri. One minute. Really? One minute? Yep. Okay, well, you can look at those photos. Uh, one other breeder I wanted to mention lives in Minnesota. He usually has 488 <laughs> breeding dogs and 466 puppies on his property. Every pet store in this state buys from him. I wanted to just give you a little, <clears throat> just a little story. I had a puppy mill dog that I adopted. He was six years old. He was scared of everything. <laughs> he sat in my backyard for months and months because he didn't want to come into the house. He wouldn't eat out of a bowl. He ate off of the floor. He was scared of everyone. He usually just stayed in the room. He had to have a, tens of operations on his ears and finally have his middle ear removed. He was with us for nine months, and he died. Okay, thank you. That, that's four minutes. Thank you for, for your comments. We appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to be heard, please step forward. Seeing none, we close this part of the meeting and we move on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance is scheduled for reading. Have a hearing date set for May 13th, 2019. Will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up the ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 14-2019. I mean, we've, uh, that we've, that we've yep, we, we have uh, removed that correction and the number has been retired. 
Ordinance 15 2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $100,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for substation feeder protection relays and ga uh, gauges and related materials. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 15 2019. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Yes. Ordinance 16-2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $131,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of radio equipment. Mayor, I move Ordinance 16-2019. I second that motion. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Yes. Ordinance 17-2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $125,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the replacement of communication dis dispatch desks and related radio equipment. Mayor, I move Ordinance 17 2019. I second that. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 18 2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $110,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for replacement of the municipal telephone system. I move Ordinance 18-2019. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Yes. Right, we move on to consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move R133 uh, through R144, 2019. A second. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Mr. Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher register? The current fund, $3,917,444.41. General capital fund, $6,511.87. <coughs> Electric Operating Fund, $273,812.35. Electric Capital Fund, $600. Water Operating Fund, $24,273.62. Water Capital Fund, $102,160. The Trust, $25,231.92. And the total is $4,350,034.17. Mayor, I move the vouchers. A second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. There is no new business. Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thanks for making this work. Thank you. This cookies is delicious. I'm glad you're not my mom. My wife, I'd be like checking. I just eat. My wife doesn't but my cook. My husband yells at me all the time. He's like, "Will you stop?" I made I made a mean bread pudding for Easter. Really. I love a good bread pudding. See, but my problem is stuff like that. I don't know.